Hi everyone, welcome to Start a School Crochet. This is Tasha. Today's tutorial is going to be how to crochet these plaid pot holders. This is a gingham plaid in black, gray, and white, and then also in a rose with a dusty rose, pastel pink, and a white. What you'll need for today's project is a five millimeter crochet hook, some darning needles, scissors, and I picked up some of these wooden rings off of Amazon and I'll leave the link for that below. So let's get started. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. Thanks for being here. If you like my content, please hit the little bell button, hit the subscribe button so you can get notified of all my future video tutorials. Let's get started on this cute project. I think you're gonna love it and it goes by really quick. So in this tutorial, you'll be learning how to change colors You'll be learning how to work a gingham plaid, little tips and tricks on how to work a gingham plaid, and also carrying your colors because carrying your colors is super important with this kind of project. Here I'm gonna show you what I've started doing. We're gonna start off with a chain of 29, and then you're gonna work back through that chain and do a single crochet row. So I'm just gonna move all this stuff aside. The best way to get a gingham plaid is to use a white plus two colors that are the same, one darker than the other, like a dark pink and a mauve, like I'm using here, or a gray and a black. You will also need your colors. So I have pastel pink here, a dusty rose, and a white. These are all Capri Eco Cotton, and you can get these at Michael's. I'll put that link down below as well. And also this is a free pattern and it's on my blog for free. You can also get the PDF version if you prefer a printout and it has charts and diagrams and everything. Okay, so we're gonna start out with a slip knot and do a chain of 29. You can do a foundation chain or if you want or a foundation single crochet, but I just recommend chaining. four, five, six, seven, eight. So here I have 29. I'm gonna work a single crochet into the second chain from the hook and in each chain across. So go ahead and pause the video if you need to and work that chain. We have one more chain left right here. Before we finish out the last stitch of that single crochet, we're gonna bring up our dusty rose color because that's gonna be the first color we're gonna use in our pattern right here. So we're gonna work our first row in dusty rose and then a light rose pink, and we're gonna work that across until we have four of the dusty rose and one, two, three of the light pink. So I'm gonna grab this yarn and I'm gonna show you how to add colors. So you just grab and you wanna leave kind of a long tail right here because when you do, we're gonna work that color back through so you can hide the tail. And that's a little trick. So you add your yarn, bring it through that last stitch and finish out the last stitch with your new yarn and then pull them all tight. I'm gonna chain one with the, the yarn coming off the ball. We're gonna turn. I'm gonna grab the yarn that's the tail. So I'm gonna actually work the first few stitches of this pattern with the tail. And it's kind of a little awkward at first because you have this one hanging out. So just pull up and finish out your single crochet and then pull that one tight a little bit. And we're gonna continue working with the tail for the first three stitches and that's gonna weave your tail in as you're going, and which makes a really great trick. So now I've done three stitches. I'm gonna drop that tail, bring back up my main color, and finish out that stitch with my main color. And then once again, I'm gonna pull it a little bit tight, and then I'm gonna weave that tail in to that last stitch again and work around it like that. Now it's time to switch colors again, so I'm gonna bring in my pink eco cotton color which is a really light pink and again we're going to leave a long tail so that we can actually weave it in as we go and this part is going to have a few extra tails you're going to have in there so i'm going to add my color pull it through those last two stitches 
and then pull that tight. Now I'm going to drop the one that's coming off the ball and pick up the tail. And then I'm going to grab all of those and I'm going to work those into the next stitch. So I'm going to go into my next stitch and work around all of those tails for the first two. I'm going to do the first three stitches using the tail and then I'm going to switch to the main one coming off of my ball, which is right here. And then I'm going to pull that tight. And here again, we're going to weave in all of these as we go. And the trick, one of the tricks to keeping your yarn untangled while you're doing tapestry crochet is you keep one off to one side and you keep one off to the other side. We can go ahead and cut this white because we're not going to be using it again right away. So we're going to cut that one and just get it out of the way. So I'm going to leave my dusty rose over here. I'm going to leave my light pink over here. That's going to give me an easy way to, to not let them get tangled up. So here we have three already and I'm going to do one last stitch in the pink. Make sure you pull these tight. So there's my last stitch. We have, we're, we're doing four stitches in each color. So we're going to do four of the dusty rows and then four pink. So then I'm going to drop that. I'm going to pick up my dusty rows coming from over here. I'm going to close out the last stitch with that dusty rose color. And then I'm going to pull these tight again because you can see they get a little bit loose. And I'm going to wrap all those up and I'm going to actually do a crochet, single crochets around them. And since we're not switching colors again for another three rows, you can go ahead and just relax and enjoy the crochet. So we did four, and now we're going to drop this, and we're going to grab this from where it's coming from over here and just pull it on up. It's okay if this is on top of that because it works itself out. And then close out your last stitch and then pull all of those tight. And now we're going to work four in the light pink. We're going to wrap all those colors inside of our stitches. So there we've done four. We're going to stop there and we're going to drop that. We're just going to grab this one from over here, bring it on up. With the tails in there, you're welcome to cut those off at any point you feel you want to, but you gotta remember that this is going to be a pot holder. So you're probably gonna throw it in the washing machine quite a bit, so I recommend leaving those tails in and weaving them in for as long as you possibly can. So just lay that down here when we change colors again you're going to bring up your other color and I believe these are probably at a good spot where we can cut them so I'm just going to pull them tight right here and I'm just going to snip both of those tails off right like that. Throw those away into the tail pile that I have going on. So we have one more light pink and we're going to drop your light pink to the direction where the ball is <laughs> and then close out with your next color. And remember to bring this up and we're going to work that in. And now we're going to do four more of the dusty rows. One, two, three, Four, and again we're going to drop this one and we're going to pull this up from behind. Even if this is on top of there it doesn't matter because it works itself out. That's the best way to keep your yarn untangled. Trust me on this one. So 
So I'm going to drop that, pull this one up, now bring it back, pull it tight, and then finish out the last four stitches with your dusty rose color. And this pattern works in multiples of eight plus five. So if you want to change it up or make it bigger, you can do any multiple of eight and then add five. And that will give you an even working colors. And I'll explain that in a second. So here's what we have so far. So doing multiples of eight, you'll have this is four and eight, so you'll have eight, then you'll add the five plus one turning chain, and then that will give you this block. So you'll have two of the dark colors on the outside if that's how you wanna keep your pattern. So for row two, we're gonna continue the dusty rose color. We're gonna chain one, turn, and we're gonna bring that light pink up with it. So we're gonna do four, one, two, three. And then the fourth one, we're going to drop this one, bring the light color up, make sure it's tight, and then work four of the light color. Then we're gonna drop the pink bring up the dusty rose and remember you're always going to be carrying your colors inside so that you can't see it some people like to cut it each row each color change that's a lot of tails to weave in so that's just completely up to you I think it looks fine without cutting colors Okay, so here's where you can drop this one, bring it forward, and we'll pick it back up when we come back on row four. Chain one. At the end of each row, you're gonna chain one and turn. We're gonna work back through one, two, three, we're going to drop this one and bring up the pink from where we had it before. Add that back in. And then pull it tight and keep going. Now we've come to a point where we're going to be changing to another color. So we're actually going to bring in the white now. The next row is going to have pink, white, pink, white, pink, white, pink. So we're going to actually be using this same color pink but over here so it's good that we carried that over to the last one because we're we're going to bring that up and use that at the beginning of this row and also if you want it's a good idea to carry this dusty rose just down a little bit we can carry it over to the other side because we're going to be picking it back up again and using it up here when we get up a few rows so that's just a little trick that will keep you from having to weave in a bunch of tails. So we're gonna bring up the pink here, the light pink, pull that tight. We're gonna chain one, turn. We're gonna carry that dusty rose back behind and do our four pink to start this row off. Two, three, four, and then after this we're going to pick up our white but I'm going to carry this dusty rose throughout this entire row so I'm going to grab my white yarn and I'm going to add it and do the same thing we did when we first started so I'm going to leave kind of a long kind of a long tail I'm going to add this and it gets a little bit cumbersome working with so many strands at one time but it's well worth it because it'll save you a lot of time so I'm going to use my tail in this one to actually work the stitches, the next few stitches. Working the tail to, to do the stitches is very, very weird at first. It's because the loop gets pulled out, it starts to get a little funky, but don't worry because you can just pull the loop tight. You can pull it all tight once you finish your first stitch. So we're gonna do four in the white, 
well three we're going to actually do three stitches in the tail then we're going to drop that tail pick up the main piece coming from your ball and then we're still going to work all those pieces inside we're carrying all of these yarns so now we've done four light pink and we're doing four so I'm going to leave this white ball over here. My pink is still over on that side. So I want to just grab it from over here, pull it up. And it's going to look like all of those tails are going to be on top of there, but that's fine because it all ends up working out. So we're going to pull the white ends tight too. You want to make sure that the legs of your stitches are the same size. And then we're going to work four pink. I'm enclosing all of these tails so that we have fewer tails to weave in later. And it's not very impeding on the pattern at all. You can't really see them through there. It doesn't really cause any problems at all, which is great. So now I'm going to drop that pink, bring up my white. And we're going to do just like we did before, working in four single crochet of each color going across. You can pull these tails tight and then loosen them up again. Now we're working on the very last block of this row and we're going to cut those tails but we're going to leave our dusty rows so that we can pick it back up later because we're going to pick that dusty rose up right after we finish these three rows. So we've got row one here, row two, and row three. Each color block has three rows of color. Like I was saying before, you could, you could drop the white back here and leave it on front, which I didn't do, but I'm gonna pull that back and we'll do that because that's much easier and it also makes it a little less thick. So after you finish the last block, pull your white forward, drop it to the front, and then continue on. So I'm going to leave this dusty rose here. We're just going to leave the dusty rose. We're not going to even pay attention to it. And we're just going to work with our light pink and our white. So I'm going to chain one, turn, and do four single crochets. Pull that white up that we had before finish out the last stitch and then bring and carry my pink yarn through and work one, two, when you reach the last square you can bring your white forward and continue with just your pink without carrying any yarn inside there we go, so we've got that. We're gonna chain one, we're gonna turn, and this is going to be our last row before we go back to our dusty rose and light pink. So I'm done with the white. I'm gonna bring it forward. I'm gonna finish out the last four stitches of my pink. So here is what we have so far. So far we have our foundation row, single crochet, we have one, two, three rows of pink and dusty rows, and then we have three rows of pink and white. So this is your repeat pattern. You're going to repeat this row and this row until you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's what I did, and it made a nice square. I really liked the way that it turned out, and then we'll finish doing the border pattern and the border and then we'll attach the little loop. Just a note, you can create gingham plaid with any colors that you'd like. When you're doing a black and white one, you wanna choose a darker gray or a medium colored gray and a black and a white. So for, the, for this one, I used a color called pewter and it's not actually as dark as I would like it to be, but I think it turned out great and some yarn companies don't provide different sh different hues of different color shades of gray but if you find one that does 
you can create it in blue you can create it in all different colors well so after yesterday's debacle um, if you want to see the video of what happened while I was recording my tutorial yesterday I will put the link down below it was pretty crazy my entire ceiling fell in in my not entire ceiling but half the ceiling fell in in my uh, living room Oof, it was crazy all right so let's get on to this I'm working on the last few rows I have one more set of blocks after this and then we're gonna go ahead and do the border okay so here's the last stitch la -da, the last stitch and this is what we have so far and you can see there's not a lot of tails to weave in which is great on this side there's a few more but that tip and trick that I showed you just a few minutes ago would be great to uh, actually work these back in so you won't might not even have any tails if you did it that way and it doesn't really do much of a hindrance to the design because it is gingham and it's kind of meant to be flowy and the colors go together I'm gonna cut the tail I'm gonna pull it out and we'll weave that in when we do the border I'm gonna cut this tail which is the pink and again we'll weave that in when we do the border so we'll just work that in to the border when we go around. Okay, so now to do the border, you can decide which one you want to be the right side and the wrong side. Usually where the little knot is, is the back side of a single crochet. So this is my front side where I did my rows this way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn it this way and I'm gonna attach my yarn right here in this corner I'm going to use my white yarn and what we're going to do first I'm attaching it here because I want it to kind of be a little bit of a seamless thing so I'm going to go straight into this corner here attach it like that and I'm not going to chain one I'm going to use my tail like I did before using the tail instead of what's coming off of your yarn I'm into this corner I'm going to do a single crochet remember to just pull all those tight single crochet chain one and a single crochet and then I just have a little bit of this tail left so I'm going to work the first part of my next single crochet and we're going to work along the rows and you're just going to work a single crochet into each of those rows I'm going to drop that one and pick back up this one and then tighten that all up you're going to weave in this other tail as you go along and working a single crochet into each of the end of the rows. And I'm just going into wherever my hook fits the easiest. So now we're reaching up to this corner and we're going to work a single crochet, chain one, and a single crochet into this corner. And I'm going to weave all these in as I'm going so it just makes it a lot easier. So you have to make sure you hold those really tight as you're working that first single crochet. And then chain one. And then do a single crochet into that same corner space. That's a little bit better and now you can go ahead and work these one stitch for each of the bottom of the chains. Okay, so you want to work around doing a single crochet in each of the stitches. In the corner, you're going to do a single crochet, chain one, single crochet. Then you're going to work your single crochet all the way back to the beginning. So let's meet back on the other side. Okay, so I'm, I'm right here back to this corner, and I'm going to go ahead and in this corner space, I'm going to work a single crochet and a chain one. A chain one and then I'm going to attach it to the beginning okay so now we're going to work a linked half double crochet we just joined and now we're going to do a chain one yarn over insert your hook yarn over pull up and then yarn over and pull through all three so that's our first half double crochet to do a linked half double crochet you're going to work your hook through this very bottom 
loop of your half double crochet right here. So I'm going to insert my hook into that loop, yarn over and pull up a loop. Then we're going to insert our hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up. And just like a regular half double crochet, you're going to yarn over and pull through all three. And you repeat that across, so you insert your hook into that bottom loop of your half double crochet, yarn over and pull up a loop, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up, then yarn over and pull through all three. And it might be a little odd at first to not yarn over when you first do a half double crochet, but it's a linked half double crochet, so you're actually linking them together which creates a little bit of a, um, a bump on the bottom, which is a really nice effect. And you'll see once you start working a lot of them, what it ends up looking like. Ooh, it is windy today. Okay, so that is what a linked half double crochet looks like. And that's what the back looks like. So keep working that across. When you reach the corners, you're going to do linked half double cro three linked half double crochets in each corner. Then you're going to work around and do three linked half double crochets in this corner. Keep working. Do three linked half double crochets in that corner. Keep working up. And when you get to this corner, you're going to work two linked half double crochets and then join it to the beginning. So I'm going to pause and then when we get back to this side, I'm going to come back and show you how to join and then we'll be finished and then we'll attach our wooden rings so you get this really cute little effect right here and you don't have to do the ring if you don't want to do a ring I'll show you an alternative way to create a little loop so that you can use your pot holder and just hang them on a hook now I'm coming up to the beginning and I'm gonna do a linked half double crochet in there one more in the corner and then I'm going to join. So I'm just going to do two linked tap double crochets in the corner and then I'm going to cut it and I'm going to join. And then I'm going to cut a really long tail. If you don't want to use a wooden ring, you can always join right here and then do a um, a row of single crochets or a chain and then work a single crochet row back to create your loop but here I'm going to pull it through like that then I'm going to take my pretty big darning needle I'm going to loop that on to my darning needle then I'm going to take this and I'm just going to set it right on top there and this is all I did I would just put it through weave it back through the front into that same space right here in the corner and then when it pulls tight it pulls it all up like that and for this one I'll show you I went through and did it around four times I weaved it through four times so I went back through the back I'm going to go back through the middle bring it back up again and I kind of want to sit it straight on top and I'm just going to go straight back through and that's it bring it back th through the middle so that's my third time I'm going to do it one more time this time I'm going to cross over this way a little bit so I can fill in that little hole that I see right there there we go so there is your loop then you're going to go ahead and just weave this tail in you can go over more times if you'd like if you want a thicker loop or something you feel is a little bit stronger but i really found that four worked really well so i'm just going to weave this back through the center of those half double crochet stitches and i'm going to pull it a little bit tight so it makes it secure then i'm going to go back through those same stitches then I'm just gonna cut it and we'll be finished that'll be the very last cut cha-ching
And now the only thing you need to do is go through and weave in all these tails. And then you'll have your finished pot holders and you can go ahead and block these if you want. I would recommend steam blocking. And then yeah, weave in all your tails and then you have your cute little pot holders. And you can do these in any colors that you want. So far I've done mine in black and white and gray and then also this pretty dusty rose. Thanks everybody for watching and if you have any questions please let me know and leave them down in the comment below. Remember to subscribe to my channel if you like what I do. You can hit the like button and hit the little bell so you get notified of all my future video tutorials and also all of these patterns are free on my blog so you can head over to stardustgoldcrochet.com and get this written pattern for free. I also have the PDF available in my store the infinite yarniverse so you can head over there and grab the pdf they'll be on etsy and it'll also be on ravelry so i got your bases covered for whichever kind of crochet pattern shop you like to shop from thanks everybody have a great day happy crocheting